Okay, this is the second. This is the week two weekly thing that we have. We'll have the demos first, and then we'll have our first ever drive through by Kriti, and then we'll assign new issues to each pair. So I think Laura and Shagun, uh, you can get started with the demo. All right, um, let me just share my screen. here. All right, so um, the code is here. Um, mm -hmm. The two changes that we made in app.jsx are this. We changed the list token to be null by default. And we created this function here, which uses um, this uh, utility from the Collab Lab. And it generates a token, and then it sets the list token. and this uh, use state with storage, which was already provided, it sets the token and also saves it and retrieves it from local storage. Mm -hmm. And then here in home, oh yeah, it, what we did here, sorry, is um, we passed then that function and the token to the home component. And then here, what we did is we check if the token is set and if it is, then it navigates to the list page. Um, if it's not set, then it will display this. And then um, when uh, someone clicks on the button to create a new list, then it will set the token, which will trigger use effect and will also navigate them to the list page. Mm -hmm. Okay. And mm -hmm. then here is uh, the um, actual changes that we made. Um, this is the home page when the token is not set. If you click the list button here, then you'll see it goes to the list page and over here in the local storage, you can see that the token has been set. Mm -hmm. And then if you try to go back to the home page with the token set, then you'll just end up back on the list page again. Mm -hmm. And because the token is set. And I believe that's it for ours. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, can you show us one more thing? If you get rid of the token, and you're on the home page and you click on the list link in the bottom. And you... uh, sure. Um, let me just one second. Clear that. I believe that we did not handle that. I don't think it was in the acceptance criteria. Mm -hmm. um, but I think what's happening right now is it just takes you to the page with no list. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. it takes you to the list page and there's no list shown. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, just something that we can take note of. Good job, Laura and Shakin. Um, Thank you. Let's talk about the pull request. Um, I think we have some feedback that we need to take a look at. Let me share this with you. I think you can see my window right now. All right. So we have we had some discussion on the dependencies uh, in the use effect by uh, Shah and me. So over here, Shah talked about set list token that that's not necessary. And if you really think about it, the second comment where he asked not to he asked whether it's necessary to add navigate also serves a similar purpose. In both cases, they are functions, and they are not really expected to change, right? The only reason why you have put there, put them there, put it there is because uh, otherwise React gives you a warning. Is that right, Laura? Uh, yeah, that's correct. I actually originally tried to do it without Navigate, but it threw a warning, so I just added it because of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I would like to share some feedback on that. Based on uh, another comment that I made here uh, in the other PR by uh, Shaha and Tuba, I mentioned, is it better to use the number constructor or is it better to use parse end? And I let them decide what's best according to them. I would do the same with you because I neither of them is a better thing to do. Uh, but here are some links that might help you. Um, let me 
open both of them. Yeah. So if you look at, uh, let me show you some answers. Yeah. So let's first talk about this example. This is a dispatch. If you know about React Redux, if, even if you haven't used it, it's a similar method, a uh, uh, function, and it is a function which is not supposed to change. And it's the outcome of a hook, use dispatch, I think. So adding it uh, as a dependency won't really do anything. It will just get rid of the warning. And since dispatch will never change, the use effect will function as expected, right? That's one thing you can do if you know that it's completely safe to add it and uh, it won't really change itself. Then you can just add it as a dependency. And uh, another thing that you can do to get rid of the warning is to uh, use, the, use the ESLint disable comments, not globally, but for that line. Yeah, specifically something like this, or you can disable specific uh, error messages as well. In this case, you know, missing dependency. So you can do that uh, by adding a comment like this um, by searching for what you need to add uh, through ESLint. If you want, you can disable the warning completely, which is not recommended. So why am I even talking about this? The reason behind that is it's a uh, React, uh, it's the so use effect is a uh, Oh, sorry. Use navigate. That's what gave you the navigate object, right? Use navigate is uh, comes out of React Router DOM, which is again a third-party library, and we never know how it will behave. We are not sure of whether or not it will change. So it's all about testing. And if you don't trust the library, it's better not to add it as a dependency because that would be good practice. And in that case, you don't have too many choices. You have to add this comment to disable linting for that particular line. And yeah, those are the two things you can do. I'll drop both of the links um, in the comment here. And what do you suggest, Laura, Shagun? Would you like to remove it or uh, would you like to keep it? Um, I just have a question before that, which is under what circumstances does a function change? Like, um, you would think that, okay, if it, if you're pretty sure certain it's not going to change, what is a situation that you could not be anticipating that might cause it to change? Hmm. The only thing I could think of is some error in the library itself. So whenever we do npm install, we don't usually mention a version next to it. So it probably installs the latest version. And we don't know if there's a bug uh, that might do that. That's, that's my uh, belief system for third party libraries. And otherwise, I wouldn't really think that a function would change. I, I mean, that would totally not make sense to me. But that's how hooks function. They are supposed to do the changing behind the scenes so that you don't realize that's happening. And that is why we need to be cautious. Another thing here is semantics. So uh, you tell me, Laura, if you have a use effect with an empty dependency array, what would that use effect represent according to you? Um, that means that it renders once when the component is loaded and then it doesn't re-render ever again. Yes, exactly. And uh, Let's say you have that particular use effect, which functions as component did mount or component, uh, yeah, component did mount in class components. So if you're using navigate within that use effect and uh, then you get this warning, so you end up adding navigate to the dependency array. And now when you look at the code, it doesn't look like the same use effect anymore whose purpose was to run just once. And in that kind of a situation, um, 
you know, if someone else is reading your code, they might not understand the purpose of use effect. Um, and if you look back at the code in future, it might get a little confusing for you as well. And that is why it's better to, it's not better to, but it's a good option to comment out that error uh, just for that, uh, that warning, sorry, just for that, so that you can um, not add it as a dependency. Because if we end up doing this for all methods, we'll have too many methods in the dependency array. As long as we are doing it for, a, for one function, maybe it's okay. So what do you think, Laura? What do you think, Shagun? I mean, personally, I prefer not to add dependencies that are unnecessary. Um, I just, my, my big, I don't know, confusion is simply why does it tell you that you should add it? Like, this seems strange to me, but that's that's irrelevant at the moment. Um, I'm fine with removing it. Um, I, I just, I'm not super familiar with React. Um, I actually work more with Vue. Uh, so I, when I encountered the warning, I had no idea whether it's something that I need to worry about or not. Mm -hmm. I see. Well, um, React warns you every here and there. And it's not, <laughs> I personally prefer Vue over React because, uh, because of these things. React is probably one of the oldest uh, front end frameworks, which is why it has these weaknesses, which we can't really get rid of. We have to live with them. So yeah, we, we always have to live with the possibility of what we're doing being wrong when we work with React. So it's up to you, whatever you decide. And if you would like to make a change, that's okay. If not, that's also okay. Um, and uh, till then we can review this PR by Tuba and Shah. And once we're done reviewing this, uh, we can merge both of them. Is that all right, Laura? Uh, sure, yeah. I'm just going to quickly make the change, and um, then it'll be ready by the time we're finished with the other review. Mm -hmm. OK. All right. Talking about this PR by Tuba and Shah. Um, Tuba, would you like to, uh, since Shah is not here, Tuba, would you like to do the demo? Just a minute. Is my screen visible? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Yes. Okay, so this is our add item component where we first imported use state hook from React and then we define three states. One to save form data which has two fields, item name and days until next purchase, which are the radio buttons. Second state mm -hmm. is to store the submission status, like whether the form was submitted or it encountered an, er an error. And then show message state is a Boolean, which is used to conditionally render submission status. Then we have handle change function, which is just to save the changes that the user makes in the form in this form data state then we fetch look uh, tcl shopping list token from local storage which was set to the local storage by laura and shagun and under it we have handle submit function which checks if we have both item name and days until next purchase and then in in such situation then it um sets item name and days until next purchase Sorry, it passes item name and days until next purchase to add item function, which we have imported from Firebase. Mm -hmm. And if it is successful, then it sets, sub sets submission status state to item has been added to the list. And then after that, we just clear the form data. And in case of any error, it just logs the error to the console. And if any of the field is missing, then the submission status set uh, status is set to please enter valid inputs, and we have this set timeout function here, which removes the submission status message from the display after three seconds. Then mm -hmm. here we have a form, 
and we have passed this handle submit function on submit event. Then we have text input field to enter the item name and the three radio buttons to estimate when the user needs to buy a certain item. With all, all these fields are with handle change function on change event. And then we have a submit button. And above that, we conditionally render the submission status state that we defined above. If show message is true, then submission status is rendered on the browser. Otherwise, it's set to none. And in Firebase or JS, we just replace console log here with add doc function, which is a function in Firestore a module, which is used to add documents to a database, to Firebase database. And this was about the code that we wrote and for the live demo. How do I share new screen? You can just go back to the share screen button and select the other window. Okay, so this is the form rendered on the screen. If I enter Cheetos soon and submit. Oh. I think it said that uh, error message for a second there. Yeah, let's try again. Hmm. It says item has been added to the list and if I try to submit uh, with any of the field empty, then it gives me this error message. Mm -hmm. So that was it. Okay, that's good. Good work on that, Duba. Uh, can you go back to the code? I have some feedback to share. Uh, yeah, scroll all the way up. Okay, yeah, uh, further up, if you can. Yeah, for the for line number 23, um, eventually, I think we can move to using the use state with storage hook that uh, Laura and Shagun have used for uh, storing the token in local storage. Maybe we won't need the set list token uh, out of it, but we can still use it eventually to get it out of uh, local storage. The reason why I'm saying that is, uh, let me just make sure I'm right about what I'm saying. Just a moment, let me check. SRC, utils, books, we have this. Hmm. The reason why I was saying that is, you know, sometimes books like that do a json.stringify before storing it in local storage. And in that kind of situation, retrieving it directly from local storage uh, can cause it to be different, you know, maybe have double quotes around it. That is fortunately not the case here. So we don't need to worry about that. But eventually we would want to uh, move this to the hook. So that's okay. Um, and for the handle submit function, I have one feedback. Uh, I don't think there is any problem with the set timeout. I think that's okay. That's your way of designing the application and I, it's completely fine. What I do think is uh, on line number 43, where you're catching the error, maybe there you can do another set submission status and uh, show an error message like failed to, failed to add the item to the list. Did you understand what I'm saying, Tuba? Mm, yeah. Yes. That's a clever idea, by the way. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, that's important because if the user is having network issues or it's not working, it will only show the error in the console. And maybe we don't want to show the exact error to the user, but we can still say something like fail to add. So mm. uh, I would uh, say before we merge the PR, uh, if you could do a set submission status after line 44, that does that, uh, that would be great. And finally, <laughs> Sorry, that's my phone. Just a moment.
Sorry. Yeah. And finally, if you scroll all the way down to the radio buttons. Yeah. So you see the value property for each input uh, tag. I'm not sure, but I think that in React, you can have integer values for the value property. If you use uh, curly, curly braces, braces instead of yeah double quotes, um, you will have to experiment with that. I'm not really sure, but if that's possible, then you can sorry, then you can just avoid casting a string to um, integer. Yeah, that's just okay. something to keep in mind. Maybe you can experiment with it. And finally, uh, since I have seen so much concern related to styling uh, in all of you, if needed, we can get PRs done without an issue dedicated to them. So if we ever feel the need to have necessary styling, we'll do that in a separate PR. And it's okay if we are skipping that for now. That's not a big deal. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that's... I think issue, mm -hmm. I think issue 13 is all about the styling. Hmm. Okay. So in that case, we have a dedicated issue for that already. Yeah. yeah. We'll do that there. And yeah, so that's the one change I want you to do, Tuba, which is to do a set submission status there. Okay. And uh, that's it. After that, we can merge the PR. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Let me uh, quickly go um, to I have others. a question. Mm -hmm. Yes, Laura. Um, so if it happens that we are doing uh, our issue, and we come across something which is not part of our issue and also is not covered in any other issue. Mm -hmm. Some like, you know, edge case or something like that. Mm -hmm. Should we submit a different issue for it? Um, yeah, I think so. Why not? If you know that there are no issues dedicated to it, and if you believe that's an important part of the application, and you or someone else can make a pull request to do that, then feel free to, because if we are building a, a project, we want it to be perfect. I know we all think like that. So why not? Also, you can open GitHub discussion for that and tag uh, yeah. some and admins. Yes, we have discussions for this repository. So you can use GitHub discussions to have that discussion before opening that issue as well. Yes. All right, thank you. Hmm, thank you. Also like, uh, no matter how much, you know, we include that, there, we, there is going to be something that we are learning all the time that we would like to add to implement this and that. So let's say you are developing React app and you just learn about some kind of uh, attacks and now we want to include third party libraries to avoid that. Uh, it could be anything, it could be related to storage or it could be related to, to you know, the way you send data to the server. Uh, so, so the goal of the collab lab is to like develop the app in a remote fashion, your team, where your team is remote and, and yeah, plan along, do retrospective and all that kind of stuff. Also building proficiency in React and Firebase at the same time. Also like while I was going through, through the code and, and the way we are using local storage and all that kind of stuff. So there is something known as a React side effect. And it could happen that whenever you are interviewing, the person may ask you, okay, what is the side effect? Why do we use it? So it, it's like, it's not, it's not bad or it's not good. It's just that you are using something out of React environment or React ecosystem. Maybe it could be native, native tools, uh, native thing, or it could be some other third party library. So yeah, it's okay to have it as far as your product is concerned, if it fulfills your need. All right.
<clears throat> so I have already merged Laura's PR and uh, Tuba, if you want, you can uh, make the change right now. If not, you can do it after the call as well. I'm on it. Ah, okay. No worries. I'll let you know when I'm done. Mm -hmm. Okay, sure. And uh, once that happens, we can merge uh, Shah and Tuba's PR as well. Meanwhile, we have already consumed 35 minutes, I think, which was not expected. Uh, initially, the plan was to do it for lesser time. So uh, we'll move forward with Kriti and the Red. Kriti? Yeah, sure. Just a moment. Okay, so is my screen visible? Yes, yes, it is. Okay, so welcome everyone to the first ever retrospective. So after every alternative week, we'll conduct a retrospective to see what all we did in the past two weeks and what all we can learn about it, what all we could have done better. So uh, this board has been shared with all of you. Uh, and I've also pasted the link in the chat section so you can get it from there. So let's begin. So, just a second. Yeah. So we have four categories. Uh, what helped us move forward? What held us back? How could we do things differently? And what should we do next? So I would like to request all of you to take some time and it would be really great if you all could fill this board right now and then we can discuss upon it. So uh, do you all have the access to it? Are you all able to edit it? Maybe let, let me share the uh, Maru board link in the chat. Okay. Okay, so I guess everyone is here now. Uh, we are just waiting for Tuba, then we can all start filling it. Um, just a second. Yeah, yeah, sure. Also, once you start filling it, do mention your name so we can know that who filled what.
should I start some kind of timer for the retrospective or for filling out filling out the uh, notes? Yeah, sure. Should I start it? I guess we'll have to upgrade the plan to start the timer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we can we can all take like five minutes, I guess, then by thirteen fifteen IST we can uh, start.
I see we are mostly done, I guess. Um, Shagun, are you still writing something? I'm writing something. Okay, okay. Yeah, I guess everyone has finished now. So, uh, yes, so let's see what we got here. So in what helped us move forward section, we have a lot of, uh, I'm seeing a lot of feedbacks from the mentees. Like everyone was really very vocal about the issues they were facing. And there definitely was a certain amount of coordination between the collabies and the mentors, which was great. Effective communication, constant collaboration. That again was pretty good thing to have. And... If we go to the next section and see what held us back, uh, got delayed a little bit. Yeah, as we started with like a little bit late with the week zero, there was certainly a lot to catch up, but we managed that quite well. Okay, so Tuba didn't find anything that held us back. That was great. Right. So uh, that definitely slows the process when we find a, something brand new and we work on that for the first time. So that's something that may keep us, may delay the process, but uh, all of you did catch up. Yeah, again, so working on a new technology, may seem a little bit hard initially, but once we uh, like start working on it, we eventually gain the momentum. Okay, so what could we do differently, right? So spend some more time having some mentor collab interaction. Definitely we could have more days when we have uh, meetings and discuss about what we are doing currently not hesitating to ask simple questions that we think are stupid yes we should never hesitate asking anything because that's the first step to progress 
provide relevant resources to the collabies to the related issue in terms of port quality structure or something else. Yes, that is a very great point. We can do that. So that would improve the code quality. It would be nice if the reviews could be performed a little earlier mm -hmm. as it can take some time to discuss back and forth. Uh, yeah, we can definitely have some more like meetings or sessions where we can discuss about what all issues we are facing and provide reviews earlier in the week. Giving suggestions and having discussions on the topic that everyone is unfamiliar with. Yeah, we can start like, I guess, flag threads to do this. Moving to the next section, what should we do next? Define scope, constraint, and objectives to be on track. Definitely, we can add more features and personalizations to the project. As Laura mentioned, if we have any idea and we don't have any issue regarding the same, we can start some GitHub discussions. And then if we find it relevant, we can add open that issue. It would be good to have some idea of what UI would look like so we can make consistent decisions as we go. Yeah, definitely. Having proper discussion on what we are going to do about styling and UI UX, right. Proper discussions and feedbacks may help, definitely. Understanding the issue properly first and then moving on to the implementation. So we have important points in mind while implementation. Uh, right. This is definitely a great point, Tuba. We should definitely look into this. So I guess that's about it. Everybody put very nice and relevant points here. And we can definitely look on some things what we can improve and remove certain things what held us back the previous week. So I guess that's about it. Uh, but, um, Paya, would you take over from here? Yeah, sure. Good job, Kriti. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Shah was not here today. So maybe we can ask Shah to separately update the retro board. And uh, then we can have a look at his feedback as well later. What I noticed was, oh, is my camera off? What I noticed was there were lots of similar points, which means we are consistent with our thoughts and ideas. Uh, for example, in the continue board, we all talked about proper communication and coordination. In stop, all mentors at least talked about being delayed initially. And Laura talked about uh, her having to learn React. In invent, pretty much everyone is talking about having reviews a little earlier, having more interactions. So that's something we can plan. The reason why we don't do that right now is because we want to minimize the amount of time you are required to spend uh, spend on the uh, in this program. What we can do instead is maybe create some optional slots where we can have more discussions, uh, where maybe everyone does not need to join. And that can help. Um, yeah. And finally, in ACT, we have a lot of UI UX. Uh, so if you if you notice, there's a thread within the Slack uh, where Shah also pointed that out. And uh, I suggested uh, we could have a chat on that. So that would be great. All right. Finally, uh, the retro went well. What do you think about the retro? How did you feel uh, giving your first retro in the program? And have you done retros before elsewhere? Laura, would you like to share some experience? Uh, this is completely new to me. Um, I haven't worked with other developers much at all. Um, so it was a new experience. Um, at first, I wasn't exactly sure what to say, but um, 
I think it's really useful. Um, clearly, we're all pretty much on the same page, which is it's good to know that you know to to just get a feel for what everyone's um, where they stand and all of that. So uh, yeah, I think it was really useful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for saying that, Laura. What about you, Tuba? How did you feel? It was my first time too, and I think it's a good way to you know collect everyone's ideas and to know what we need to do next. Mm -hmm. I like it. Thank you, Tuba. And what about you, Shagun? How was your experience? For me too, it was the first time. And I guess it's a nice thing. It is making you more expressive towards the program. Thank you, Shagun. All right, uh, moving forward, the only thing we have left is assigning new issues. So I'll quickly go over the issues right now. moment let me share my screen we don't have much time left we'll, we are already over our designated time i think all right so the next issues are issues five and six and here's what we're going to do what i want each collabi to do is once i'm done describing these issues i want you to post in the chat which issues you would prefer and if you would prefer either of them, uh, just mention that as, as well, okay? Before we look at the issues, we will have a look at which pairs we are going to have this time. I think it's in this file. No, not this file. Orientation or maybe project brief. All right, so this is week two. The next week is going to be uh, week three. So it's Laura and Shahzeb and Tuba and Shagun. So that's the pair that we are going to have. Keep that in mind. Um, we don't have Shah here, but everyone else is already here. Okay, so let's talk about the issues. Issue number five. As a user, I want to join an existing shopping list so I can share a shopping list with another person. Okay join existing shopping lists so they can manage them with friends and family user enters an existing token okay all right so what this essentially means is being able to share a token and letting other people also access the same list so that they can make changes so what joining here essentially means is sharing okay and yeah, uh, everything else, you can have a look at the issue description to know more about it. And for issue number six, we have, I want to filter my shopping list to make it easier to locate items in the list. So what you need to do for this issue is to allow the user to search through the list and filter out items. There are many ways to do it. There are many different kinds of algorithms that we use for searching. And I'll let you think about what you want to do. So, um, uh, Shah is not here. Tuba, Laura, and Shagun. I would I would want you to mention in the chat if there's any particular issue that you would like to take, or if you would like if you'll be you'll be happy with either of them. Shagun, what about you? All right. So based on the feedback that we got, Shaha is not here. So I would assign number six to, let me make sure, Laura and Shah, and number five to Tuba and Shagun. Let me do that right now. All right, 
Um, once the meeting ends, I'll also create the conversation threads for these issues in the Slack. And yeah, that's it for today's, um, today's weekly sync. Is there anything any one of you would like to say before we end the sync today? Feel free to open your mic if you want. Okay, looks like we don't have anything. So let me stop the recording first.